since the dawn of time. You've heard whispers of a secret, powerful language. Perhaps you've made the travels to the top of mountains to talk to programming gods. Oh God, what should I code in? What will help me reach enlightenment? And they whisper to you, forth, 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 but also lisp. Lisp is a huge one, but uh, beforeth. And you've been up thinking, man, I should really learn some forth. Well, look no further. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'm going to tell you why it's good afternoon, everybody. Because today, you're going to learn some fourth. Absolute beginner's guide to fourth. And if you have any uh, friends that want to get into programming, don't teach them Python. And don't teach them C, man. Teach them fourth. And I'll tell you why. It's very, very cool language. So what is fourth? Well, fourth is a stack-based language which means everything in fourth is done on a stack. Now a stack is a data structure uh, described traditionally as LIFO or last in, first out, which basically means everything uh, gets inserted into the stack from the top, but can only exit the stack from the top as well. And you can't reach into the middle of the stack. Stack is absolute paramount important in fourth. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is install fourth or fourth interpreter. Uh, and a classic one is GNU fourth. GNU maintains a fourth interpreter. So, and it's called G fourth. Kind of sounds like you're saying G force with a lisp. So you're going to just, uh, you're going to install it with app get install G fourth. As you can see, I've already done it, so it's not going to install for me, but that's all you got to do. And to uh, go into fourth, you got to just write g fourth at the terminal right there, boom, and there it is. And you can type by at any time to exit. Or you can also hit control D, uh, as is typical with most interpreters in the terminal. You can just hit control D to get out them. So what is fourth? What is g fourth? Everything is written in reverse Polish notation. So instead of saying 1 plus 2 plus 3, let's say, in a traditional programming language, or in Lisp, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you instead write 3, 4, plus. As in, put 3 in the stack, put 4 in the stack, add them, and then put that in the stack. So now that's in the stack. You can always print the top of the stack, which also pops it, by writing dot. So you can see there's a 7 right there in the stack. That's basically how fourth works. So there's some pretty interesting stuff you can do with the stack. But first, let's quickly head on over to Emacs, because it's a bit easier to type there, for me anyways. Uh, this is just super simple. I'm just copying and pasting lines from that over to this one. Alright awesome, let's go over a few simple examples. Let's say you want to do 69 plus, I don't know, 420, all of that multiplied by 5. So to do that in fourth, you would have to write 69, 420, sorry, 420, then add. So then they're both on the stack, boom, you hit the add, they're going to collapse into one number. Then you're going to put 5 on the stack, then you're going to have multiplication. So now 5 and the result of that add are on the stack. Multiply, and then that goes on the stack. And that is how you would multiply that. And now the re top result of that is on the stack. Uh, and you can just print the top of the stack by writing dot. So that's 200 and 2,445, and if you've done the math yourself there, you would know that that's correct. So, very interesting way of doing mathematics is just pushing and popping off the stack. But let's say you don't want to just do math, so that's already useful, right? It's a classic opening. But let's say we want to define our own words. So the way fourth works is 
it's all space delimited. So every time there's a space, there's a new token. So there's no curly brackets, nothing like that. It's just spaces. Everything is just spaces. So to define a new word, which is kind of like you can think of a, as a method, but it, it's almost changing the syntax forth, is uh, you just write colon, the name of the word. So let's say add 420, something like that, space, and then uh, what it literally translates to. So this would say 20, 420, and put an at. Notice all the spaces. Space, semicolon, ends the command. So now we've created add 420 as a word that you can use in forth. So let's plop that over here, and there we go. And now if we write add 420, if so what would happen if we were add 420 10, let's say, right? Does it give us 430? Of course not, because we're not obeying the stack. This is 420 plus something, ra which will give us something random with whatever was on the stack, and then we're putting 10 on the stack for no reason. Instead, you would do 10 at 420, like that. Boom, because that puts 10 on the stack. Any number just on its own will just put that number on the stack, like 30, and then you pop it back off, it's just 30 was on the stack. And so anyways, the next number off the stack should be 430. There we go, beautiful. And just so you know, the dot itself, this is an operator. This prints the last, like the top of the stack. Pops and prints the top of the stack, okay? And remember to always put spaces in between tokens. So the way you actually comment in forth is you put them in just regular parentheses, but make sure there's spaces in your parentheses, or because forth is completely, completely space delimited. It's very beautiful. All right, so we can create stuff like that. So uh, let's get to the basics of the stack manipulation, right? Let's say you have a stack. I'm going to represent the stack like this. Uh, your stack is if you want to let's say do some operations on the two but you don't want to get rid of the two by the time uh, you're done but a lot of the operations they pop they do something and they go back so what you can do is dup which duplicates two and then do a bunch of operations and then you'll still have this original one at the end of the day. So a lot of times when you're reading fourth code, it'll have a, a description like this, like dup n n n, which basically means duplicate takes a number and puts your stack back as this number and this number. So we can come here and say add two to the uh, stack, then just write dup and then if we print the last two elements on the stack, there'll be a uh, two twos, easy as that. Another e uh, kind of useful stack tool is called swap, which looks like this, um, which basically swaps the first two elements on the stack. So you got number one, number two, boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? It's as easy as that. And what I find really funny is there's this pretty legendary kind of goofy uh, in the land of lisp stuff you ever read that book for learning fourth called starting fourth and in his example in starting fourth for the swap uh, which I'll show now he uses a 4 and a 20 I I did not start the fourth jokes fourth jokes are super enlightened and they all make themselves so there you go. If that if you needed any more reason to use forth, this is one.